Uh, welcome to Coastal Foraging with Craig Evans. Uh, today we are just uh, looking at some of the uh, edible coastal plants that, uh, that grow on the estuaries and uh, seasides. Just looking across the silted up old harbour now and you can see sea purslane. We'll get a closer look at that later on. But in front of us we can see some uh, sea radish and you can see the little sea uh, radish seed pods which are delicious really they taste a bit like um, capers and you can eat them and you can pickle them very nice too they come in two different uh, color varieties as you can see we've got the yellow flowered ones and then we've got the white flowered ones I uh, don't know what the difference is apart from the flower color but uh, a very nice uh, tasty meal we're just coming up to a nice plant now uh, which is uh, wild fennel you can see the nice fronds it's uh, early June and you can see these little froth like uh, bubbles on it that's the protection of a frog hopper uh, insect uh, and the thing is with with sea fennel it smells of uh, aniseed and it uh, goes very very fish and in the autumn when the uh, flowers then turn to seeds uh, the actual uh, seeds are uh, delicious we are looking across uh, the estuary now nice part of the world down in west wales just to show a bit of uh, diversity, we come along and we'll look at some of these lovely orchids. Yep, nice wild orchids. Looking back to the sea defences now, we'll uh, pan across and you can see the sea defence and a bit of sand giving way to the uh, sow, there he is and he's walking amongst some sea purslane now sea purslane is a delicious plant very very common it's a succulent and it uh, it retains the water in its leaves and uh, excretes the salt through through its leaves but it has a lovely salty taste and um, I find it goes very nice if it's chopped up and mixed in with uh, mashed potatoes looking back across uh, inland and here we have the ubiquitous sea beet uh, just about to come into flower and lots of my recipes you see this it's the ancestor of all of all beetroots and sugar beet and just come across to the side now and next to it we've got some oranges a member of the goosefoot family uh, and fat hen uh, again nicely edible and uh, make for a lovely salad or a, a steamed uh, spinach substitute very nice but now of some sea beet this time we'll uh, get up close and you can see the uh, the ladybird there and we go across amongst the oranges and i think this here is chamomile not quite sure you can tell when the flowers will come out and going across again we can see uh, red valerian uh, yeah, colorful plant and you can eat eat the leaves a very uh, that mucilage in them it gives uh, gives body to a soup or a stew and next again to uh, the wild radish food everywhere there's a wild radish growing all along the bank now amongst this embankment of uh, 
of the sea radish. If you look up behind, you can see the sea buckthorn. There's uh, no berries on it yet, it's much too early. But in the autumn, they'll have lovely, uh, astringent, sharp tasting uh, orange berries, which are delicious and they have. Uh, a very high vitamin C content. I think it's about 10 times more than an orange, so it's uh, very useful. The sea uh, meets the land now, so we've got some dry sand before it comes into a marsh. You can see the sea purslane, but you can also see the sea lavender starting to pop up. Uh, this love beautiful purple flowers uh, coming on the on these spikes uh, in a few weeks time. Um, we walk across through this uh, uh, carpet of uh, sea purslane and we're going to try and find some uh, marsh samphire. Is Leo enjoying himself in the water? Where's he gone boy? Leo, go on, go on water. Go find him. That's it, a nice succulent. Delicious to eat. It's uh, very young and tender as we speak. Uh, but as the, the season goes on, it'll grow to about 10 inches in height and start to branch off. Um, you're not going to have this, I'm going to eat it, it's delicious. Very nice too. And there's lots of it. So it's an annual, which means it grows from last year's seed. And this particular patch is obviously uh, very suitable for its uh, growth needs. Now this little pill you can see here now, a little inlet, uh, which stays like that at all stages of the tide. Um, it never, never dries out. It's a nursery area for lots of flounders, bass and young mullet. There'll be thousands upon thousands of them in there. So uh, part of Kamarthen Bay which is a very fertile environment. Okay, so come across to this patch now. which looks like uh, blackberries, but they're not in fact, they're uh, dewberries. And here are the flowers of them, and when the uh, oh, nice little beetle on there, look. and when they form uh, the fruits, they um, they'll have a lot less little uh, seeds than the blackberry, and there's a slightly different taste as well, and uh, it's a it's a real show plant, very very nice, very nice and tasty. But it takes a long time to gather some enough to eat. Okay. So coming back to the uh, the path now, and looking at, again at some uh, wild radish. But for some reason, the wild radish they seem to attract lots of these uh, brightly coloured snails. And uh, all this foliage will probably be stripped off in a in a few weeks' time. It'll be all bare. And all you see then is the uh, the seed heads, the flowers would have gone, and uh, you know all plays its part in the ecosystem. Because across in the sand dunes where it grows as well, these shells and snails, when they die, the actual shell itself uh, it uh, calcifies the uh, sand, so it makes it suitable for lime-loving plants. Then. So, oh, we? We come across uh, some sea radish now, which has got lots of these seed pods. So I'll uh, pick a few of these and uh, take them home. They're delicious to eat, but at the same time, as you can see, we've got lots of uh, wild flowers here. Just to show you now that there are uh, dangerous plants here. Perfectly edible, but you just have to be careful. There are wild parsnips here, and uh, if you get some of the sap, same as uh, giant hogweed, uh, 
some of the sap on your skin and it reacts with the uh, sunshine you can have some nasty burns Let's see if I can find okay, I've just found uh, probably one of my favorite show plants now it's called uh, sea holly you can see it's uh, prickly and hard skinned to main retain moisture uh, lovely blue flowers on these and the roots are edible uh, they used to uh, many many years ago they used to uh, soak them in syrup and candy them and they should be known as eringos but uh, the thing is uh, you shouldn't uh, dig up any any plant uh, because it'll uh, destroy the dune system and in any event it's illegal here so this is uh, the eroded dune system we had uh, some quite uh, fierce storms over the winter and I'd say this dune system has been eroded back about 20 meters but as you can see there's uh, plenty of dune plants here here's the uh, sea holly and those little buds there uh, they're the flower buds they'll come up and they'll have thistle like uh, really beautiful uh, bluey purple flowers one of my favorites I mentioned earlier about uh, the snails have a liking for the sea radish just come across now and I found this particular uh, part and uh, a thousand snails can't be wrong <laughs> The, uh, they must really love this plant so the thing is there'll be all sorts of uh, bird life coming in like thrushes uh, to feed on these so uh, very special habitat this I love it just found this patch of uh, plants now I think it's some kind of vetch I'm not sure uh, because I haven't seen the flowers uh, but they look like uh, members of the pea family and looking at the uh, sea pods, the seed pods there it's uh, doing very well yeah, let's pick a pod up now and uh, open it yeah so there's, uh, there's the seeds inside so it uh, has a pod just like a member of the pea family which um, the thing is they have nitrogen fixing nodules with bacteria in the roots that uh, will uh, obviously fertilize the, the dune system as time goes on at the landward side now of the dune system and there's uh, an apple tree probably uh, got there because somebody's thrown uh, an apple uh, stump in there and looking down you can see these these plants here with th spikes on they're a special kind of rose called the burnet rose and they have flowered and you can see the uh, the flowers on them and they have rose hips like all other roses uh, but when they're ripe they won't go red uh, they'll go black and uh, very very short rose it uh, only grows to about two foot I suppose and helps bind the uh, the dune system together just missed out now just going back uh, to the landward side I just come across an invasive plant I believe from uh, the Americas uh, this is, looks like a evening primrose that will have lovely yellow flowers uh, uh, later on in the year and this plant as well binds the system together this is uh, normally weed in gardens very deep rooted uh, known as uh, mare's tail or horse tails you can pick them up and uh, gardeners don't like seeing that right i said earlier i try and find you a wild parsnip so i think i've uh, i found one now not uh, not 100 percent sure though uh, but uh, I have eaten uh, eaten them in the past and uh, they're just like normal domestically uh, grown parsnips and apparently it's uh, an invader from uh, North America so and uh, 
that's the end of our little walk today so thank you for watching and uh, hope to show you some more again in the future sorry there's no uh, uh, cockles just plants today